Hey everybody, uh, this is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. How are you guys doing today? Welcome back. Uh, hey, I've got the uh, first video in a new series uh, of the top best youth football de defenses video series on how to uh, defend uh, what I'm considering the top 10 offensive plays in youth football. Uh, this is the first video in how to defend that play. So. Uh, last week we had a video of the Power Eye 23-25 uh, dive, and this week we're going to uh, learn how to, to defend, defend that play. So, uh, so let's jump right into it. Uh, so here's last week's play. This is number 10 on my top 10 offensive youth football plays, or the best plays. And that's my opinion. I mean, everybody has their own opinion, but this is... Number 10 in that series, it's an uh, article out on coachparker.org, and uh, we went through this video last week. But here it is. You can see uh, this is my version of the power eye. Uh, I call it pie, and they're in a pie left, big left, which is an overloaded offensive line there. The power eye backs by two blocking backs. I move them over versus a traditional because in youth football, especially at rec, these blocking backs are a little bit slower. So I kind of pull them over. If I've, I've got faster backs, I'll back them up a little bit. And then if I've got really good backs, I'll put them in the traditional uh, way. But uh, this sort of works out here good. You can even move your two back over kind of that way a little bit if you'd like to speed that process up. But, uh, but here they are in my pie setup, which is my power eye variation. Uh, and you can see the defense. It looks like they're in a, I got a 5-3 front here, five down, three linebackers. And you can see why I run this here. You've got that big red uh, gap there where, where it's really set up to get three and four yards or more on that if it's blocked well. And if the defense doesn't adjust and shift or blitz to that, uh, you've got some really nice uh, yardage on that. So that's the 23 power. And we're just going to go through the offensive plays again real quick. I'm going to show you how to defend them. And here's the 25. And my offense knows when I call a 23 or I call a 25, it's really either going to be the 3-5 hole, possibly the 7, depending on where this gap in the defensive line is. And that's really what we're looking for to adjust to, is we're trying to find this empty gap where there's no defender between my two offensive line guys. And uh, so we're looking for that. So this is what we've got here in that. And so that's a 20. It's same play, but uh, you can see the two blocking backs move over. I actually have them move over. If we go into stealth mode, we won't move from behind the guard tackle. But if we're not playing stealth, we'll actually move them behind the two blocking backs, the two uh, O-line guys. And we'll actually have the O-line kind of split to a three-foot gap there and try to move out the uh, defensive line. So that's kind of that little play. Uh, but uh, that's the 25, and you can see there's the gap here again. And the defense is really trying to trying to hit that. Now, now you're going to ask, okay, how can I defend that? Uh, you know, there was a team that ran a similar and kind of where I pulled this from. His backs were deeper. He had more of a juke back. I run more kind of power, single wingish, double wingish, just sniffer go down the going downhill with it. He ran it a little bit more jukey. His backs were way back, the further than mine. His tailback was like ten yards back. So he ran a little different. I kind of took what he did, what I ran in high school in the power eye, kind of meshed it together and came up with my pie variation. But so we had to we had to learn to defend his kind of jukey power eye setup that he was running and another team wound up running it too. So we saw this formation a lot and they do run a lot of counters out of it, but this is how I first started defending it out of my 6-2 multi-8 youth football defense. So this is the base formation out of that. This is the 6-2 wide tackle for some of you guys. And let me get a pin here um, and so we can... Uh, we can write with this, and I'll write with green here. So since we got gray and red, so what we did is we we we're, we're, would be in a normal six-two wide tackle, 
and say Fred would normally be sitting back here uh, or shifted over a little bit. So you've got what happens is is they've got an overloaded line, and that that could be even or overloaded. But right now they've overloaded. So and most of the time, the group that we played, we're, we're in an overloaded line with a little nasty kind of thing sitting here. So basically, after playing this team a couple of times and they were shredding this with it, uh, what I try to figure out is uh, how to shift and also. Uh, deal with the counter so i came up with this four box kind of deal or a three box and you can see they're not in a box here but they're they kind of are and here's the box uh and it's kind of a diamond thing there but these four guys are responsible for this and that's how i think about this defense here is these four guys are responsible for anything here and over and so uh I've usually got some fast guys over here that can deal with it. This guy better be really good. Your D end here, uh, we we usually switch up backside to uh, uh, wide side on that to make sure he's really got the speed to deal with any counters coming in here. This back is actually backing. This corner is actually backing up. Uh, into more kind of a strong safety role and he's got to be fast enough to get the sweep here this linebacker needs to be fast enough to deal with all this so you've got this four box kind of thing sitting back here and really it's just a shift with the line and kind of the linebackers but i look at also as a, as a four box uh, so if you if you look at it it's just a shift uh from the front six you've got these guys shifted over here instead of this being the center this becomes the center uh here's a tackle and uh here's the will and what i've done is i've also added this fred to six and you can say mike go to six fred to you know fred to replace mike or something if you want to get more beef in there but i move fred from here to here now he's coming up and playing this gap so you can see I've gapped this all, and they will do what I call a uh, Zulu Butaki roll, which means they're getting on all fours trying to put... So they're going to go through an all four like a bear crawl, and this hand will go through one guy's crotch, legs, and this hand will go through the other, and then as they get around, he'll kind of pop their ankles and throw his shoulders up and then roll, and that'll trip these guys. It's, it's an old... Uh, kind of a wedged killer and, and it's, it's a real quick you, they can't hold the back of the calves or the heels but it's like a real quick boop and uh, you hit their you hit their knees or the side of the, and then you roll your butt into one of them uh, i like to usually roll to the uh, inside and take the inside guide out so because we want to push this strong inside run out here to these three guys out here but that's kind of how i do it so all of them are basically submarine butaki rolling and I call that Zulu. So, uh, and actually the guy that, that runs this offense, uh, he runs the Bataki Roller, the Zulu, and uh, also. So uh, uh, so that's as a defense. So that's what these four guys are doing. Or they're doing the uh, Bataki Roll, Zulu, Submarine, kind of how you want to teach that. But we're trying to bring down the center, we're trying to bring down all five of these guys with these four guys on like a wedge buster routine. And then I've got these two linebackers and basically this outside linebacker dealing with this along with the corner that's backed up here. And he's also got to be able to play this contain out here if he has. But I have him backed up here, so if he, if he has to deal with this, this running back popping right there, he's got that. But the key to this thing is to bring down and make a big old pile right here where this back has to to juke and stop right in here and when he does that you've got him and so that's my first way staying into in my base six two wide tackle without not trying to do too much or pre-calling it or whatever the d line will know to make a shift and they'll shift over uh the Tackle on that side because Fred's going to uh, to two, four, six. He actually should have gone to eight versus six, but he knows what he, he's going into that hole. The D tackle will move here to split those two guys. Now, what you can do if you really want to get crazy is move Fred over here 
when you call that and say, you know, Fred to three and then uh, Tom to eight or six, and so you've got your two big tackles uh, over here. So you could switch those two guys out if you wanted to. So that's a really quick thing. If you scouted it, and I can't tell you enough, I mean, you've got to really scout this stuff. I mean, I know a lot of you don't have the time to scout. Our league sells videos to all the games, so that's great. Pay a friend to go scout. But if you really want to win Super Bowls in your youth football league, I highly recommend scouting. Uh, I've been scouted. I scout, uh, especially top teams. So you kind of know when they're in this formation, the top three or four plays, they're going to run out of that. We knew this play, they're running downhill on these three or four kind of plays right to the back side. And then they've got, you know, then they have this little thing and then they have a counter here. So we just, we prepare these four guys here on the back side to deal with those two counter reverse plays on the back side. And they're ready for that. And these uh, other seven guys are ready for all this downhill in this one sweet play. They didn't really pass too much out of it, but you can see the tight end sitting here. He's going to run into that rover if he does release. And the same thing with this. Bob, uh, Bob or Mike have got him there. So that's the initial way kind of to defend that play. Let's look at it again. Okay, I love a 70 diamond. I run this a lot for third grade and younger. This is a, one of my favorite defenses here. It's just really simple, especially when I have two really strong uh, linebackers that are faster than normal. I can kind of play them at a strong safety level, little backed up, and I don't know how many my son played the Fred in this defense, and he had a pick six every game, and uh, I think it was junior, so he had been 10-11, uh, and we ran the 70 diamond a lot because that season there were a lot of people just running the ball. But uh, they'd throw to tight ends or whatever, and he would pick those off. So you've got a really smart, uh, fast kind of linebacker, strong safety guy. Uh, this defense really works out, especially you have a one hardcore fast kind of Mike guy, a uh, big linebacker that's big but also fast and kind of a medium-sized fast one. This defense works out for that. But here's the shift. It's really similar to what you just saw. I kind of got a four box here with these guys, and so they're going to worry about all this. And then I, I've got this same thing where I'm trying to take down these four guys with that stuff. I've got two linebackers sitting here in the corner waiting for the pop. I've got stuff back here. So you've got that, you've got that. And there's not really a whole lot of shifting other than there's a line shift with this. And again, if you want to get really crazy, you can shift your mic back to the back side to give you more speed. Maybe have him stand up here, but move your D tackle, your D tackle over here. So you have two big D tackles. And I would recommend that taking that down that. And that's where they're doing kind of the Zulu Butaki roll wedge buster thing where they're trying to hit, grab the ankle real fast. It's not even a grab. It's just a flip with your fingers and your shoulder hits, and then you roll. And so it's almost a trip, but not. But if you do hold, the offensive team will see that. They'll tell the ref you'll get a penalty. Uh, that's happened before. Another coach was doing it. He kept grabbing and holding. You can't really grab and hold. It's a very, it's a one-swipe little move, and then over, and then they're down. Uh, so, uh that's how you deal with that. And so the key is is to wedge buster these four or five guys here, make a pile, and then they pop to your guys out here. So that's out of the 70 diamond with a defensive shift to the strong side. Kind of some of your linebackers and your backside corner rotates. So here's a 6-3 hybrid. So you're in a 6-2. You just want to roll down, have the Fred blitz, or you can even have Mike blitz. And so You've got this guy bringing this down in a Zulu row. The same thing. We're trying to bring basically all these guys down here. You could blitz this Fred here and kind of try to take these two guys out before they even get out of here. And that's the key, or a mic. Uh, if you're going to blitz these guys, you've got to hit these guys here. You can't let them get to you here because then you're toasted. Okay. So, and then you've got your shifted D line here, of course. Uh, from that and then you've got your backside he's kind of moved back because I usually play my guys up here and he's moved back to help out there so that's kind of how you could do it in the 6-3 hybrid and if you wanted to and you wanted to get really crazy 
You could move Mike over here, blitz both of them right at those backs, move your backside corner over here, and that's going to just make this weak over here on this backside. And now you're basically playing kind of a three or a two box back there, but be careful about that if you're going to do selling out there. Because, you know, you, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. But, uh, but really, if they're just chowing you with this play on this backside, you have to take some risks sometimes to stop it. We've, we've done taking some, we've had to take some risks, so uh, just be careful from scout film and know that they have a good counter, or if they do have a counter or reverse out of this, is there a key that you can see that sells that so you know not to be doing that blitz every time, and that's really uh, kind of how to deal with that. Uh, you can also go into a 6-5, and then here, yeah, so here's the two blitzes here. Uh, I guess I got ahead of myself, and here's the three box that you've got backside with that group there. So this is risky with a three box uh, uh, versus a four, because uh, if all of this comes back and they pull a guy in here, uh, and then the quarterback comes around and boots, you've got a lot of stuff going on there. So be careful with the three, and that's where your scouting is going to really uh, help tell you that, but that's how you can deal with it on a on a 65. And I want you, what I want you guys to learn from this kind of stuff is, you know, you you had the 62 wide tackle, and I had shifts in the stunts in there. You've got to make that, and or, or you've got to come up with something. It's really easy to move guys around and name it something, you know. 65 you know if i put this in for a specific team and i have put something little craziness in for a specific team and, and, and let's say uh this team uh was the uh was the seminoles are here uh maybe i call this uh you know uh indian fighter or maybe I call it tomahawk. So they, you know, so that's a specific defense for this particular uh, team, and they know, okay, we're going to hit, we're going to go into tomahawk here, because uh, I got two blitzers for tom, was T tomahawk, and we're going to we're going to attack that when and come out in that particular formation. And so, kind, you know, kids will remember that. So it's real easy. They'll see the Seminoles. In something, and then they'll come out here in this tomahawk formation. The defense knows, okay, I'm tomahawk. This is what's going to happen in that. So don't be hesitant to make a stunt or a change for a particular team. You can't stay in a base defense without stunning or blitzing. Offensive coordinators love that, and they will eat you up. So that's really, out of all this today, I hope you get that you really have to make changes on the fly in defense uh, in game. Uh, you, you can hear me if you're at my games when I'm coaching defense. I'm calling blitzes. I'm yelling. I'm calling shifts like I'm the Mike linebacker. You can't really wait for a three, for an eight year old or a 10 year old to make those calls. Try to be making those calls for them. Some of them you can at senior levels and stuff, but I'm always, always making these calls, making sure we see it. I got two or three other guys looking too, but I'm the main caller. Uh, the other thing you can hit, of course, you can run a gap eight. I mean, that gap eight's going to, if they get through that second tier, though, they're gone. Uh, but you can move Fred back a little bit or even those three guys if you a little bit. But you can run definitely a gap eight. eight. And, the, and the thing, again, is you're trying to bring all of this mess down, so he's got a stutter step, and then hopefully you'll get him uh, with your outside DNs there or your linebacker, uh, your corners. So uh, definitely you can do that. Uh, so again, this was uh, Coach Parker. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. This was uh, the first in this video series on how to defend the Power I-23 and 25 mid-power mid, mid power dives. Uh, remember, uh, this in most of these defenses, uh, I think all of them except for the 6-5, are in my 6-2 uh, multi-8 youth football defense playbook that's for sale over at CoachParker.org. So uh, you can go check that out. Once again, this is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. Uh, please like the video if you liked it. Uh, if you uh, would make a comment or you want to know some, you know, have have a particular defense, maybe work on a particular play for you, shoot me a comment. I might be able to help that out. Hey, if, uh, if you don't want to buy one of my playbooks or uh, help support the channel by just subscribing to the channel, YouTube really 
uh, gives us a bump if you subscribe. So there's a little subscribe button over there. And just hit that, and then you can hit alert for every time I do a video. You'll get an email on the alert. But also, just subscribe or comment or like. That's a big plus to us. And you don't have to pay anything to do that to support me so I can make some more videos for you. Or share the video. That would be great. You can shop my store. I've got some links to all the stuff that I use and practices and in my coaching bag. Or you can buy my playbooks. Uh, I've got the uh, Power Wing Beast Offense here over at CoachParker.org, and I've got the 6-2 Multi-8 Defense for sale. Uh, both uh, both these books are in digital and uh, hard copy, like you see this one. Hard copy uh, for sale over at CoachParker.org. They're either uh, $24 or $25 for digital and about $35 for uh, uh, the Hard copy, and I believe that's a $40 bundle uh, for digital if you want them both. I uh, can't remember what the printed bundle is, but you can check them over at CoachParker.org. Hey, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, remember to play for fun, and winning is funner. Thanks a ton, man. This is Coach Parker. Ciao. See you guys next time.